Hello! Hi guys, it's so nice to see you. Um, right, well, welcome to the beginning of a new painting and it's really lovely to be back sharing my process. I enjoy it so much um, and I think it's just such a nice thing to do. So I'm going to be working on a self-portrait and um, I'm not going to get much done this evening. It was just like a warm-up. Um, to talk a little bit about why I'm doing it and uh, what I'll be doing in the portrait and also just to say hello. So if you come on and say hello it would be really nice and I know you're watching um, but I know as well that people like to watch uh, on catch up so um, just leave me questions or drop me a message if there's anything that you're not sure about. Okay so um, here is the deal. I've been taking some reference photos. Uh, this, the subject um, is, in a nutshell, judgment. So um, I wanted to make a uh, self-portrait that I could use um, to submit for a uh, portrait um, open, and open calls for portrait competitions. Um, but also something to have on my website and um, it's very much on my mind this whole thing of judgment um, and particularly the judgment of um, institutions of art so this kind of notion of the art is very personal and it's kind of a bit of yourself uh, so it was a bit sort of you know it, it was a little bit about how I felt about submitting my work to being judged um, so that's kind of where I, where I'm coming from on this one. Um, I really wanted to do something big. I've thoroughly enjoyed working large on commissions, um, but I've never really done a big painting that hasn't been uh, involving someone else. Um, so I did that uh, one, which is actually in the background of my reference photo of um, Cheryl, which I really enjoyed and learned so much from. So this is the same scale. So you can see it's really big. Look, there I am. Hello. Um, and uh, so I've got a camera set up here so I can show you my um, palette and stuff like that. Um, I've got uh, this camera here. This down here is the thumbnail. You can just see that picture there. So that is, um, I basically just sketched that from the picture at the top. Um, and I'm going to turn the music down, I think. I think that might be a little bit loud. Sure. Um, yeah, so the. Uh, I guess it's just a while since I've done any streaming and I've got a bit of a new camera set up. I've moved my computer into the studio. So it's great. Um, but uh, yeah, just a little bit rusty. So bear with me, please. Um, yeah. So what I'm going to do tonight is, and the reason I thought I would do it tonight is I, it gives it a chance to dry overnight. So I'm just going to lay on an undercoat. Um, it's called toning the canvas and hopefully if I get time I will also do a tiny bit of um, just marking out. So because it's not a commission, um, I don't need to worry too much about likeness. I don't need to worry about, um, you know, if I make myself look um, different, uh, you know, it's fine. Uh, I don't mind if I look thinner or fatter or whatever. Um, ah, hi Paul, so nice to see you. Thank you. I'm in trouble with the tech at the moment. Okay, all right. Well, never mind. It'll be on, um, it's lovely to have you live, but it, this will be on um, Facebook anyway. So, uh, uh, sorry, on YouTube, so you'll be able to catch up later. But it's nice to have you in person. And I can see actually that I haven't got that chat get that chat there so they okay. this is this is what I mean I'm rusty too Paul <laughs> very rusty so tell me if the music is too loud or too quiet because I can't hear it from where I am um, yeah so I was just saying self-portrait and um, yeah and when it's your own portrait of yourself you can be as rude as you like to yourself um, because there's no one to offend so uh, without further ado, I'm going to mix up some, um, so I'm going to move you on to there and that way you can see what I'm doing. Okay, now if you're watching on Instagram, um, just to let you know, you can only see this middle bit, but um, I would encourage you to watch on 
uh, a channel where you've got a wide view, um, no Twitch or, or YouTube. All right, um, okay, so I'm just using a big fat brush. It's just a decorator's brush, sea white. Um, that might be an art brush. But, um, and I wanted to just slightly warm up the, uh, so I've just got water here. Um, and I usually use um, burnt umber. So what I'm going to do is uh, mix it in this. So I've got a bit of water. I mix it in that first and I had a sponge set aside in case I need that because I might end up using quite a lot. It takes a surprising amount of coverage, um, so that's just like that. So I'm using uh, Liquitex acrylics, so although this is going to be an oil painting, for the um, underpainting I have uh, learned to use acrylics. Um, music is fine. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Well, I hope it's, uh, it's very nice to see you, Paul. Um, I hope... Right. I hope it settles. Yeah. Internet issues. I was uh, struggling with moving from the other room to the studio. I'm using the Wi-Fi, so hopefully it's not too laggy. Right, that's really on a mix very nicely, does it? Got a hair in there. Um, but hopefully you can see it's it's quite a, I think of it as quite a cool brown, burnt umber. Um, and so what I was thinking is I might just put in, I've got a warm yellow, uh, which I thought I might mix in a little bit, just to uh, warm it up a little bit. Um, and the, yeah, so this is a medium yellow of no particular <laughs> pigmentation. Uh, well, the truth is I couldn't find my raw umber or my raw sienna, so um, that's why I'm doing this. You know me. <laughs> Always cutting corners. Okay, so it's probably be quite streaky and um, that's fine. Okay. Right, let's just, here we go, first mark going on. Oh, that is kind of, that will average out to a bit of a more, more yellowy raw colour. Well, it's fun this bit because it really, really doesn't matter. I'm just giving it a little coverage. I think if it's got a bit of texture, that's fine. And um, if you can see the uh, reference photo. You see in the foreground of the reference photo there's quite a lot of just the floor tiles and that is these tiles. So I took the photo in here. So um, where are they? These tiles here are going to be um, in the picture. So one thing that I thought might be fun to do was to um, actually paint uh, paint that from life so I can go back to the position where the camera was and apart from myself I can paint everything else from life but uh, it depends whether I can turn the camera around for streaming. That's going cool. Are you painting tonight? canvas is quite absorbent. I haven't added any gesso. It is, in theory, it has been um, gessoed. Um, I'm also hoping to sort of wipe out some bits, so that'll be fun. So just drawing really big, no gridding, no camera lucider this time, all just freehand. Um, if you're watching on Instagram, I'm afraid that, um, hello on Instagram, I'm afraid that I can't see your comments. 
so um, it, thank you very much if you're watching and um, I hope you're enjoying it and if you want to comment um, in the uh, YouTube the links in my bio so you can see it in YouTube and then see the whole width of the screen so um, self-portraits I do um, there's something really special about them and often it's a direct gaze although you can set up uh, mirrors and um, using cameras so you can it's now there are plenty ways that you can do a self-portrait without uh, needing to look directly at the viewer but um, uh, and as I said you can use mirrors or um, you can take a reference photo but I do love that that's one of the things I really love about um, self-portraits is that direct gaze right, I'm going to take a bit of just water now so I want to kind of use the it's really quite transparent this colour and I want to take advantage of that. Right Paul you said I was going to start a new one, another idea. Oh ah uh, yes yes that's the trouble isn't it when you've got a project on the go and uh, then you get new ideas. I totally sympathise. I struggle with the same. Um, like a sort of butterfly brain going from one flower to the next but your your um your cards Paul look amazing your lino cup cards they look uh, they look finished to me what more have you got to do you've done your hand touching and your gold leaf right, so I'm just Trying. While it's wet, I will just sketch out that first, um, those first shapes. It's such a lovely free part. Basically, the, pa the painting just gets tighter and tighter, doesn't it, as you go on, as you get more detailed. But at this stage, it's uh, very, very general. Can't get more general than this. <laughs> But my hope is that this uh, this colour here is slightly warmer than the colour of my actual floor tiles. But I have used this in the past and just left it showing through in some areas. It's a really nice uh, it's a nice effect. Um, to have that undercoat showing through. Often I think of it as a sign of uh, proficiency, like in um, uh, Velasquez and Rembrandt and people. You could, if you can see that undercoat, it's a, it seems to me to speak of the, having the confidence to know, even at this stage, what uh, you know, what colours you know, that using a colour that's going to be useful, and then as you get on with your painting to not overwork it and to just leave these lovely uh, areas which are quite textured because they're still because there's they're the first layer on the canvas um, you know, apart from the industrial priming that's happened um, they really uh, have a lovely a kind of almost like brickwork or stonework quality. I've used them for stonework in the past. Uh, I think I've got the painting here. I can show you. What's your idea then, Paul? I'd leave the last picture as was and the card star a reasonable amount still to do. Ah, right. I don't think I've caught up with your last picture. Was that the one? That was the sunset, was it? With the black, black uh, foreground. That was really vibrant. You're brave painting a sunset. <laughs> I have some sunsets are there with flowers in my estimation as uh, impossible to uh, impossible to really do justice to. But uh, did a very good job. Do you 
Julie Dunster does fantastic sunsets and light effects. Leave it to her. I will leave it to her. I'm not saying you should. I think it's important to stay in touch with your uh, adventurous side. And uh, painting like this is a really nice, very primitive. So uh, I'm not going to worry too much about uh, even coverage because it will almost all be covered and any that's exposed I would like to be slightly uneven. But I just want this to be dark enough and wet enough that I can pick a little bit more paint, uh, that I can pick out some definition now. So I'm going to be using, I will try with a sponge, sponge, maybe dry brush, uh, and maybe kitchen roll. Uh, just basically anything that doesn't leave bubbles. So not loo roll because that would that would break off. You can get bits of paint. So here's a tip for oil painting. I took that pick on the way to work. Oh, nice, nice. Well, next uh, next challenge then, Paul. To take your paints with you and leave for work a little bit early and then paint it from life. See if you can get it down. It's a real challenge it's called chasing the light. <laughs> right, so basically all I need is a few battleships and I've got the, uh, in the right way, yes. Yeah, a few battleships. There we go, a bit of sea, a bit of light, and uh, eat your heart out Turner. <laughs> right, not really. Um, apologies to any uh, anyone who. Turner's right to be seriously. Uh, no candles held to Turner. Did you see um, Timothy Spall in that Turner program? He was amazing in Turner film and he was amazing in uh, the Lowry film. Right. Okay, so it's not even. Uh, the light's slightly bouncing off it. Um, Hi there, hi, thanks for joining. Right. I'm just doing an undercoat here on this um, big canvas, 36 by 24, so three feet by two feet. So Paul, if that was a sunset or a sunrise, um, I'm thinking it would have been either very early, be going to work or you were doing a night shift. Right. Okay, so there we are. Uh, basic coverage. Sorry about the bounced light. I think if I can try moving that. Maybe. Ah, oh, there we are. That's better. Okay. So uh, my painting is probably going to look a little bit out of proportion because um, you're looking sideways on and uh, also because it might be a bit out of proportion. Okay, so I'm going to be moving between uh, positive and negative. I've got, um, I'm basically drawing with a brush. Um, I will take, I don't know, something a bit like that. The thickness of brush is my hands are not particularly um, a middling size. I'm going to go for something a bit long like that. That's rather stiff and I want something a bit soft because it's going to be like um, like painting, like like drawing, painting. Okay, right. So 
what have we got? I'm just going to squint now at my picture. I'm quite challenging to they work now. Oh, half seven in the morning and very cold. Ooh, well, um, yeah, not saying I would do it. Okay, so I'm looking at the picture. I'm looking at the reference photo. I've also got it up here, actually. I think it might be... Um, I'm really just positioning the figure. So uh, what I wanted was a sense of quite a lot of space here in the foreground. In fact, I might just wipe some of that out now because um, actually I actually think I'll use the kitchen roll. Hold on, please, caller. Steed. Yeah, I expect you just want to get get to work and get it over with, do you? <laughs> right. So I've got a kind of a horizon where my um, studio detritus meets the floor, and uh, which goes behind the thing. Out. It's not quite straight. But it's basically, I want it higher than halfway. So I'm going to mark that in. See what big lines and how very rough, roughly I'm doing it. So I'm wetting this. Um, that. Just lifting off any dense, dense colour. Okay, and so I've got, uh, there's a box, so there's that figure in. So the head of the figure is about there. Okay, and it's a real, I love, I, I kind of wanted to do a real uh, slumpy slouch. Now that left foot is, uh, below the horizon, say there, and then I've got a kind of arc here, and the other foot is here. So I was actually taking some ideas from the, um, there's got a few things in common. Uh, retire, yes. Ah, oh, fabulous. Fabulous, Paul. If it's worth it. Um, I can make it worth your while. Right, so um, try that. So the knee is above the horizon. And mark, there's a knee. And the other knee is actually up here. Right, now that's really big. So I think I might think it's up. I really want it to come forward towards the viewer. Now halfway on the figure is basically, I'm going to bring that down very slightly. I'll bring that uh, horizon down there to there. I'm quite keen to do a lot of the working out on the picture rather than in the thumbnail. So I really want this to be quite lively, quite uh, uh, spontaneous. Do you retire then, Paul? How long? No, do you have a TA? This is just a tumbler and a tiny bit of water and kind of keep it condensed. Right, now this, looking for plumb lines, this is actually a straight edge here, there, 
and the knees are level. Whereas to make a knee landmark, one is here, one is actually slightly up there. And if I did that, have I got enough room for Makes sense of it. Okay, so now this is under my thigh. That's the half there. Up for grabs of Uh, now this leg here is going down there. I think I needed a fatter brush for that. So there's a really strong vertical there and a strong contrasting white in the sock. Let's commit to that foot for now. Um, it'll probably all change but and then again, I'm looking for these. So there's a vertical there, just off vertical. That's under the thigh. And then I'm looking carefully at the, that this leg is also kind of stretched forward. This foot obviously is quite foreshortened. So I was fairly careful with the camera. make sure I had a good bit of foreshortening on that foot. And um, talking of previous work, one of the things that I have taken from a, another um, recent portrait is from the uh, nude on Halo sofa that you might remember. Do you remember she was holding her glasses? I really like that detail. I really like that she's holding the glasses and I like the way the feet came towards viewer. So I think I've probably lifted both of those uh, ideas from that picture. Right now there's quite a, a lot of light on the thigh which you can only really see because of the dark behind it. So I'm going to take like a watercolour approach and try and add that dark in there. There. See that leg starting to Mortgage to your 70. Ah, oh, right, yes. Well, you're a long way off 70, aren't you? I think. Well, let's hope that somebody picks up a load of subscribers for their train channel and makes their fortune, then you can retire early. I'm hoping Leon's going to make his fortune as a YouTuber. Would you still paint? When you've retired, bet you would. We paint more. My friend Dave is uh, looking forward to retiring this year and painting. I think there's a real sense of urgency, isn't there, when you've used a lot of uh, your life working, that sense of wanting to get on and do things for yourself. Right, I'm just mapping out that bigger. I think the head will be there. Move that so you don't have to. <laughs> right, so this is the box. This is my light box. There's my head. Yeah, you can see that. Hopefully it's got a good sense of uh, moving forward. Um, and there's a painting in the background. If I wanted to have in self-portraits they quite often have um, bits of bits of special importance so I have got a few of those in uh, not too consciously but um, I see I have some brushes so I've got my brush bottle there. Um, I've got a couple of portraits and um, there's a I'm right, just taking a plumb line up from the crotch there right that is my new and there. Mm. You would paint, yes. 
quite driven, aren't you? Inked. Which is one. Right. Yep, I get it. Someone asked if you could, if you had all the money, would you, do you still try and sell your work? That's another one. I think I might have asked you that before. I think I will. Uh, when I, when my ship comes in. Uh -huh. uh, so I have a portrait of my son there and um, I've got a portrait of my daughter here and then there's this painting here so I'm looking at a, for a plumb line from there's the toe and I've got like a, a diagonal shape so I've got a shape like that there's the foot of the bin that and uh, that's where the painting comes up from. And it's pretty vertical, that painting. So let's get that in. Need a bit more paint. Um, okay, right, so just to recap, um, I'm using Liquitex Burnt Umber as an undercoat uh, to go under the oil painting. I can't see how many people are watching on Instagram. Might be a princely zero, in which case I don't need to worry. Okay. So this is just a little bit of water and the acrylic will dry tonight. So this is the only, um, only water-based element of the painting. Um, and following that, it'll be fat over lean. So you could say water is the leanest of lean, no oil in it at all. Uh, anyway, acrylic works fine for an underpainting and it dries quicker um, and it's, uh, it, does, you know, it doesn't stink and um, you don't have to worry about ventilation. Well, I don't have ventilation, I'm no health advisor. Okay, so there's that picture. And if I have the head here, let me just check some measurements. So if that was the top of the head, and there I've got these landmarks. So there's the... Got a tr I'm looking for shapes. It's really good to try and look for shapes. So there's a curve here. There. Like that. And there's a shadow here. So my hand is going to be there. Um, I've got this curve here, I've got the kneecap, so from there, there's the box going in, uh, so the kneecap is pretty much there, level with the wing. And one of the advantages of working from a photo at this stage is for things like this, especially if you're close to your subject, uh, these measurements can vary hugely from eye to eye um, and uh, consequently you can end up with a, um, very tricky decisions as you move about the figure. So if you're working from a photo you don't generally have that problem right now. I've got uh, good Scottish legs um, which are short and fat. So uh, there we go, that's more like it. And then I wore socks for the photo because I had white socks on. I could have changed them, but um, I want the attention to be drawn to this front area, to this shoe. Um, so I thought the white socks would really help with that, would, would help with um, catching the eye with the contrast. It's that. Other knee. Duck. Dock. Egg. There's the cut off. So let me just check that shape. So from the knee, I'm just looking at this shape under here, making sure I've got this foot roughly in the right place. Starting to Rich, selling would still be a goal. Yes, you're right, Paul. It really, you could send on to charity or all sorts of uh, um, ways you can invest, aren't there? 
But uh, yeah, I think selling, for me, not everybody, I think selling is, uh, um, it's, it's never going to pay the mortgage, I think, this, uh, this occupation, I might be wrong, but uh, selling is a big part of validating what you're doing. Uh, feel it uh, spoils the whole thing. Very personal. Right, so under here, we've now got the chair. So the chair, the frame of the chair is quite a handy set of landmarks as well. So I'm going to look at it like a constellation, like I've mentioned before about using constellations for hands. Um, so you and, and feet, you think of the toenails or the fingernail as a constellation when you're drawing a figure. Um, so if I've got that foot there, that foot there, and I'm trying to imagine it like a constellation of stars, and I've got the chair legs coming in. So there's that one's like that. So I've got one there. They're not quite a line like that, I reckon. That's the bottom. Okay, so I'm just going to mark where I think the bottom edge of those chair legs is. Then I've got one like that. That, that shape there. I hope this is interesting. <laughs> Right, um, and then that's actually dark shadow in the background. Okay, uh, now I've got I've got the um, there's not much going on up here in terms of contrast, and that's very deliberate. So I wanted to make sure that the head of the figure really recedes um, and it's uh, a great body language that uh, I've seen for you and I uh, wanted to just try so um, that comes in like it's like a zigzag from there to there to there across the chest there across the pecs and um, right, yeah, that that rib cage actually finishes slightly to the right of the knee. Rib cage there. There's underneath. Bit of shadow. That arm. Starting to see a little bit of a figure, I hope. Um, what I might also do is go in with a little bit of um, white. Okay, now in the background here we've got this shape. So this is a really nice shape, I think. Be straight. Then I've got the bin, so I didn't uh, didn't curate this too carefully because it would be very easy to treat it like a still life. Uh, bin, and I've just seen that that's about right. That's good. So it lines up with the corner of that picture quite nicely. So that tells me that I'm still on track with my proportions. Um, So, um, yeah, I mean, tell me, I'm interested to know from a viewing experience, what works? You know, is it nice to have, um, is it nice if I chat or do you like to just listen to me? And what do you think of the music? Right, there's a little bit of contrast here, just fine. There's a picture there just about level with that crease 
and that's going to help me navigating. Um, and I've got my hand, this shape here, the edge of my hand there. I might actually go in with the white and just mark a few tentative um, highlights as well. And then this is all pretty wishy-washy back here. So again, less contrast, just the frame, the back of the canvas. There's quite a bit of shadow under the arm there. Then on the other side. Very luckily placed bit of glass wrapped in there. Top end, which is just below my Uh, we've got some shadow to go in and then I think I'll get the uh, get the white out for a second and, um, and then I will call off but and then from tomorrow it will be oil paint so this is just that initial quite interesting is. And there's a little bit of Steve, tiny bit. Up there. Right. Uh, I've got some more bottles in here. That. Um, pedal of the bin. Um, Okay, and I'm going to treat those all oh, this level here. So that's that box coming down to there now. Push it down. I try and keep this really thin, this acrylic. Um, so that's a little bit pasty. The canvas there, a bit of Steve. And there's my daughter just here, so put Cheryl in there, roughly there, and it, so that's my head, her head is here. Might have a bit of a measure after. I might even have very slightly exaggerated a foreshortening. I'm just going to do a little bit of measuring. So, um, right. So if I just, I'm just measuring for the, finding the halfway point, which is the halfway point of the finger is, I think, just below, yeah, just below the knee. So I'm going to stand back and just check halfway point from the toe to the knee. 
right yet. So I've either got to increase the head or lift this foot up. Uh, or I can drop the knee a tiny bit. What shall I do? But I don't want to raise the... Maybe I could raise the head. I like the shape of the legs, even if they're not right. They feel... I know. What I could do is just try and think about the pelvis. Because that will help. So if the pelvis is here... using a wet naturally scrub out quite a white So it doesn't need much uh, adjustment to um, sort itself out. Quite a way off. Um, okay, I'm going to take this leg up a tiny bit then. I'm going to take the foot up. If that's the toe of the chair, that, yeah, that's the issue. There, okay. I was wishful thinking on the leg length. Right, there we go. That's better. Okay. Now, Toe to just for me. Still miles off. Go from there. Come on, even. So basically, this one probably also needs. Yeah. So this one is also higher. through this burnt umber. I know my strange taste in me, but it's fine. Uh -huh. Difficult position to cut. I can... St yeah. Oh, oh, Paul, that's so nice. Thank you. I'm so happy. 
so happy that this is good for you. Um, good for me. Like having you in my studio. Just thank you. Ditto, you're very welcome, the other people who are watching and not commenting. If you're commenting on Instagram, I'm really sorry I can't actually, um, I can't see your comment. But I will um, very much appreciate that you're watching. Okay, yes, you're right, Paul. It is a really tricky pose to capture. I think probably partly because I'm doing it sideways. Um, but we're nearly there. I think that just being in no rush. Yeah, there's that. There's that toe. That foot. Light, but I would. Yeah. It's funny if I was, um, uh, if this was a commission, I would be stressing about whether to send the client the photo. I expect you've had this, Paul, with your cats. You got any in the uh, the offing at the moment? Um, so I'd be stressing about whether to send the client the uh, photo progress because it looks so awful at this point. Now Steve's wheel is level. That there, there he is, like a stand. One of those things that I think if anyone's looking at the picture who knows who's got one, they'll know. They'll know that's a skeleton. There's that shoe. Right. Have another go at measuring now. Stand back. So I've got my ink brush. That right. That's closer. Hello, Mr. Sausages. Can I come and say hello? We have company. The poor cat is a definite marathon. I know how that's a bug. Ah, nice. Nice to have some things brewing. I'm giving in, I'm putting that head a tiny bit higher as well. Okay, so now the middle of the figure is in the right place. 
I'm going to clean up that right hand area so that I can nice and light here. Kind of wipe the right back almost to the white canvas. We're looking at the negative space now around the foot. Lovely pattern of the shadow. I reckon this is too far over. Made my own leg look too long. Should have known better. Okay. Right. I don't think I am going to get the white out tonight. leg by in with the light. why your eyes are straying away from those cards Paul when you've got all that it's very nice have you got the energy to do any tonight I'm guessing quite late isn't it and it's the middle of the week we're all starting to feel a bit tired aren't we Tom's going back to school tomorrow though so that will be nice for on and nice for us. I've got a real flash of light. smoother surface that the acrylic doesn't soak into so much you get a good use that right now my hand yeah there other hand also really catching the light up here. So let's get that dark under the arm in. It will stop now. It will stop. Marcus is very kindly with.
from when's it my work? My worst day of the week may just come. Oh, Paul, yes, I know what you mean about the self-portraits, but uh, the thing is, self-portraits, you've always got the model there. Whenever you're free to paint, your model is available. And I promise you do switch off after, it is a bit weird to start with, but you do switch off and, uh, and then it's great. And as you know, you have a lot of good points uh, that you can have. Perhaps if you did a self-portrait, that might um, help you with seeing those good points. Or, or it also helps to um, objectify, I suppose, in a good way. Mr. Sausages, do you want to go out? Come on then. Yes, say hello. Right. Let's have another go at putting the uh, some features in then. So. I'm not going to have nearly so much contrast up here um, because I want that head to recede. But um, I still want to fit shadow under the chin. I've got this really awkward uh, light, which is fine, it's a challenge. Really just looking at the face as a shape, not at all as a person. Certainly not as me. <laughs> Vaguely I are bottom face there. It all blends in a kind of chinless wonder sort of thing. The, might be the rib cage actually. The uh, might be the top of my rib cage now. Does it look like a slumpy person? I'm just looking at the value, the value contrasts, uh, and this whole area to the right is a bit darker. I'll just fix some of that in uh, because the this arm of the figure is defined by the difference from the background. That. I'm going to lose that face <laughs> and I'll pick it out in a second.
Right, that's better, good. I've got more of the gap here. I knew that wasn't quite right. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. And it starts to fit together. Yes, Cheryl. Like that, her gracious swoop. Nice to have her in my picture. out the eyes again. So I'm going to pick out the forehead instead. There's forehead. There's there. A little bit of light on the cheeks. Getting really dirty now. Okay, so forehead. really quite light here. That shoulder is catching the light, relatively speaking. and reversible. Like I like the fact, watercolour, I like the, uh, the commitment that goes with it, that you can't really very easily reverse it. They shouldn't. Okay, and clean up some of this over here. So that is all going to go. Dried. dries really quickly this acrylic. Right and then what I might do is a little bit more measuring before I come back tomorrow and then sometime tomorrow I will get the oils out um, hopefully they're a bit more organised. It takes a lot of setup unfortunately. What Wern said how is it? So quickly. <laughs> oh thanks Wes, thanks so much. Right so um, there we go, bare bones, that's it. Where's you got it in one. Um, I don't know if it's possible. Yeah, you can sort of see that, can't you? Um, there, take it. Yeah, I think it's probably as good as it's gonna get. So it's attitude. Come back on to chat. Right. So hey guys, uh, Paul and uh, whoever else is watching, um, thank you so much for joining. I hope that was useful. So this is the first layer of the self-portrait and it's been done in Liquitex acrylics um, on a cotton canvas. Um, and I will be back tomorrow with the oil paints out um, and I will be getting on with um, the next layer. So it will start to, I'll be starting to define the shapes and block in some more definite lights and darks. Right. So, um, yeah, well, Paul, whatever you're doing tonight, I hope you have a good one. I hope you're now nice and chilled. And uh, Wes, thanks for your compliments. And um, thanks to everyone else who's watching. Um, I'm sorry I haven't been able to see your comments, but um, I appreciate you watching very much. And um, I'll see you, um, see you tomorrow, I hope. Um, I can't say what time it'll be, but I will try and uh, flag up a warning. Okay, take care. Lovely to see you. Right, off I go.